Our next story is one that is incredibly close to my heart. As a father whose experience tries me firsthand, I know full well how much we can become that silent partner who don't really talk about our emotions too much. So in today's talk from Larry Crofton, tries me from a dad's perspective. We get to hear that perspective from a dad's point of view. His story is one full of hope, courage and strength. And his daughter Darcy is truly amazing. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Darcy's diary. We'll have the links down below so that you can find more stories by Larry and Darcy and join them on their incredible journey. Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce Larry Crofton and his story. Okay, hello, I'm Larry. Um, I have a daughter called Darcy. Um, some of you may know me from YouTube or Instagram because <clears throat> um, I've posted a lot about Darcy's life and her story um, in those places and she has gained quite a few followers um, in the Tries Me world and you know given a lot of people hope and it's the reason I started posting in the first place because I didn't want other people to sort of feel as lost as I did when I um, became a dad to a Tries Me 13 child. Um, I've been asked to talk today about um, a dad's point of view, you know, a dad's experience and things. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how it, it's, I mean, it does, it differs a lot. Um, I don't, I don't think the whole experience of the um, emotional side of things changes too much between the mum and the dad. It's a very very emotional um, experience having a child which drives me 13 but I think the support and the networks um, that are out there are quite different and um, for a dad it's 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 not the easiest task straight away um, to to actually reach out and have anyone to speak to or any groups or anything <clears throat> um, for me I'm quite used to the social media side of things. Um, and when Darcy was born, um, she, we didn't know something was wrong. I know, sorry, we knew something was wrong, but we didn't know that she had trisomy 13. And um, she was born and she was in a special care baby unit. And the, NICU, neonatal intensive care unit. I think that's the right the right name for it. Um, and she was in them for two weeks. And during that time, um, we were waiting for the diagnosis, um, genetic testing for what she had. And it was it was a tough time because she was delivered, and I, before that, I, I had no idea of tries me thirteen, tries me eighteen. Um, all I knew was <clears throat> um, tries me 21 down syndrome and I thought you know being quite naive at the time that that was sort of like the worst worst thing that you could get um, so yeah we, we've been told that there could be a problem um, was offered testing and uh, you know if, saying that we could have an abortion at I think it was about 34 weeks in the end and um, we, we declined the, the test in them because of the risks um, we've, we've put, in a, put in a needle in the in getting the amniotic fluid um, so yeah we just kind of got into our heads that we, we were either having a as they say normal child <laughs> or um, a child with Down syndrome or something. Um, that was it, I thought, you know, Down syndrome um, is the worst worst thing that they they can be when it comes to these sort of things. Um, but little did I know that I was about to be introduced to Tries Me 13. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a big, big shock. Um, when she was born, I was extremely, extremely shocked. I mean, from a dad's point of view, actually in the hospital, it's quite, 
it can be a bit cold straight away sometimes you know the, the understandably the mums need a lot of um, attention and everything but the dads kind of get forgotten I think I noticed that in one of the scans actually we were, we were having a scan and I had some questions to ask and I asked a question and the, the woman performing the scan just ignored me <laughs> and looked straight at my partner Rebecca um, and I asked the question again and she just looked at my partner Rebecca and was like oh do you have any questions and um, yeah I think I don't know <laughs> you know I think we're treated quite differently in the medical world in that sense it can be quite cold sometimes but back to Darcy this particular um, experience with her being born um, you know she came out and I could see straight away that she didn't have Down syndrome and I could see straight away that she wasn't normal <clears throat> and I use the term normal lightly because I don't like saying that um, because I believe these children are exactly how they're meant to be um, as in this is something that's happened at conception it's it's not something that because when they're born you kind of mourn this child that you had in in your mind you know this this picture of what it was going to be like um, but then the realization will eventually come around that 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 child never existed it was always um, in my case it was always Darcy um, and yeah I think when when she came out it was extremely they kind of passed her to me straight away because it was an emergency cesarean as there was a lot going on at the time and um, I was just you know I was in shock um, one because of the emergency cesarean two because I didn't know what to expect and then they took me over to this table and they're like you know she's got extra extra fingers extra toes so like she's got a kind of palette and um, I was like okay trying to process what I was being told um, held her again went back over and then she kind of turned her head around I saw one of her ears were missing well it hadn't formed but it, it's missing it's just a little um, a nub <laughs> as my partner calls it um, and yeah that's when it, it just I was just it was too much for me at the time and then she spent two weeks in um, Skaboo and NICU and during that time I was googling a lot um, and I came across Trisomy 13 a few times because I was you know searching things because we already knew that she had um, duplex kidneys from the scans so that was the one thing we knew that was wrong and um, I kept coming across Trisomy 13 and I said a uh, team came down about breastfeeding and trying to help because she's got a delayed swallow and they're trying to help with the feed and they came down from Addenbrooks which may I add that Addenbrooks have been brilliant they've been brilliant their team there's brilliant but this one person that had come down at the time I'd said um, I was just talking I was like you know this looks a lot like this um, <clears throat> tries me 13 um, this Patel syndrome and she turned around to me and this is where I first heard this she said that it can't be that because that's completely incompatible with life <clears throat> so it can't be that I was like okay all right um, okay and that was that and that's kind of what drove me with the whole social media stuff because when I found out it was tries me 13 I wanted to change that and change that so other people didn't have to hear that <clears throat> you know these children are are compatible with life and it's a very outdated horrible <laughs> sort of term to use uh, saying they're incompatible with life um, there's a lot of children around the world proving that with the right intervention these these children do come on leaps and bounds um, unfortunately it's due to a lot of there are a lot of children that 
don't make it and live a very short time like most of the ones born um, but a lot of them go straight into palliative care and you never really know I think they just decide that they some of the treatments are too invasive um, but you know we do see from other places that do do treatments that they can work out really well and add years um, to their lives so I don't know it's, it's a really tough sort of situation trisomy 13 isn't something to be taken lightly um, <clears throat> so we had all these things going around in our head you know we we were told that um, well basically when we got the diagnosis we were discharged and like the next day and she was kind of basically just sent home to die on the diagnosis alone there was no um, apart from having hyperglycemia at, at birth um, there was nothing wrong she had a delayed swallow and um, we weren't really <clears throat> we, we had to do the emergency sort of um, CPR sort of training and stuff um, to leave the hospital but we weren't really showing anything else like NG tube changing and stuff that's something I had to learn myself um, eventually because we left the hospital they put a tube in that was for three months for the NG and we were told that <clears throat> all her follow-up appointments were cancelled um, we didn't have to get her immunized we didn't have to worry about that her red book that you normally get with babies wasn't filled in and um, we were put onto Keach Hospice who they're, they're really good they're really good um, and it wasn't until you know about three months when she was a few months old she got sepsis um, and they were trying to just give her morphine and say they were telling us that you know she wouldn't make it through the night <clears throat> um, until we sort of put up a fight uh, they threatened legal action and then said they were going to get a second opinion and ran Great Ormond Street Hospital and Great Ormond Street stepped in and said they had to do what they could do to help and um, Darcy made a full recovery within two weeks she was in hospital and after that they took her seriously and um, all her appointments got reinstated and you know she's um, she's been dealt with with teams from various hospitals she's under Great Ormond Street, Adam Brooks, uh, Lister and there's a few um, that deal with her now but yeah the whole experience is is very very you're kind of thrown in at the deep end and um, I found from from a father's point of view um, there was a lot less information for me it was m most stuff's kind of aimed at the mums which I think you find with any pregnancies anyway you know the dads kind of get a little bit pushed aside um, but we started looking online and started looking for things you know um, obviously before before the sepsis happened and everything <clears throat> but we were looking for things we came across you know certain posts there were children who'd lived longer um, children who were in the years old um, it seemed quite rare but there, there were some about and um, yeah we found groups and I suppose that's where the first sort of experience for me being a dad was different um, I decided that the groups were very female based. There wasn't a lot of, um, or, they're accepting of everyone. I mean, the groups that are out there are brilliant. There's, there's a good one on Facebook. There's obviously, um, you know, posts on Instagram and stuff, but it's normally mothers. It's a lot of mums posting stuff and a lot of mums talking. <clears throat> and um, you also bump into various different um, nationalities and stuff and I find that in on Facebook um, 
there's a lot of talk um, about religious beliefs and stuff and it, it can be you know conflicting some of the conversations and that and uh, it, it was hard to try and find you know the right information at the time when it's needed and um, there was a lot of parents to talk to but once again they're all they were all mums mainly um, so I kind of I started my own thing I just started posting posting I was like I'm gonna change I'm gonna change Instagram I'm gonna change what I can to try and show a different outcome to the doom and gloom because at the time there was a lot of um, a lot of negative stuff I find that I think the Facebook Facebook side of things and that I think that the parents there that have done things have, have been doing it for years and hadn't quite catched on to the Instagram side of things and that and um, I think that's where I started sort of talking to other mums I I had a lot of people reaching out and talking to me and wanted to know about Darcy and um, I, I yeah I got talking to a lot of mums and from that I kind of I've spoken to a few dads since um, and I do find that the dad side of things we're quite similar there's there's a lot of them tend to be a lot quieter um, a lot more in the background but still sort of experiencing and feeling all these traumas of every day tries me life um, it'd be great to see more stuff out there for dads and it'd be great to see I don't know just more more places more accessible for dads where you know I don't know it's it you don't really come across anything or find anything that's sort of um, here welcome it's welcome tries me it tries me world but I think we have a, a slightly different experience to to the mothers and that that go out and look for information out there and Darcy in particular you know I've made some pretty good friends um, there's uh, my friend Deanna in America um, she's mother to Grace who um, was one of the first parents I really you know got close to and started talking to a lot <clears throat> and we both kind of set out on this mission to you know share share anything we've learned and share good pictures of our children and how you know our experiences differ because um, Grace is slightly different to Darcy she's got um, the tracheotomy um, and has seizures at times um, and is on different sort of meds and stuff I mean, both Darcy and Grace were diagnosed full trisomy 13, but they both have different set of um, issues. <clears throat> Darcy seems to be more based around urology. Um, uh, UTIs and stuff uh, seem to be her main problem, which seem to affect a lot of our children as well. And it looks like it might be a neurological issue um, like with a delayed swallow, there might be an involuntary movement missing out of the um, actually passing urine and they don't fully empty and seem to get UTIs quite often. <coughs> I, I, don't, I think it would be an under, understatement to say Darcy's had about 20 in a lifetime. I think she's, she's probably far exceeded that and they can be very uncomfortable. And obviously um, for Grace, her, her experiences, Deanna's experiences with things are different again. And so we, we, you know, we try and talk and share the information. But I also got talking to her partner, Chris, and um, he's probably one of the first dads I've really sort of um, bonded with and spoke to. And um, I do, I, from talking, I do kind of feel like, you know, the dads are a bit forgotten and I don't know, it's, it's, it is tough, it's a tough world. <clears throat> I mean, there'll be a lot, of, a lot of parents coming into the Tries Me 13 world and I think a, a, great, 
thing from day one in, in the medical world would be um, sort of approaching situations, not just as mum and baby or family, but having a, a dad, <laughs> you know, conversation or sort of groups or anything like that um, can be of, of help. Um, I mean, there are some great groups out there like Soft. Soft is, um, you know, the, the as far as I know, the biggest um, trisomy related um, charity. Um, and they do a brilliant job in getting information out there and doing things like this, having talks where professionals are <clears throat> talking in this, and normal, you know, just parents like me get to sort of come and talk and share our experiences and share ideas or whatever we do. And it's really good. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, part of the dad problem is this whole laddie type attitude at times, you know. I'm a man on this or some people approach it like that actually I've seen charities sort of approach it like that and say they try and act too laddie like, oh let's get the dads together let's do this or you know um, I've seen a few things and <clears throat> I think they need more of a more more of an approach where you know the, the, these people are hurting they are experiencing it hard they are having a tough time and just talking and sharing experiences is a great, great thing. Um, I mean, any, you know, any dads, mums, parents out there, tries me 13, tries me 18. I mean, I'd always say you can, anyone can message me and come and say hello. And, you know, anything, any experiences that I can share, um, if it helps someone, then that's great. Um, you know, Darcy, <laughs> Darcy's quite unique. Um, I've often had a few few parents messaging who are in ha having a very tough time <clears throat> um, from different countries as well. Certain countries have different views and outlooks and don't sort of um, help sometimes. Or I might have had some parents sort of you know just had a baby there in a bad way losing their child and you know they'll message thinking sometimes that I've got some sort of answer or secret and that can be that can be difficult um, but I, yeah I, I try and try and help where I can if I can help people sort of um, just you know have a better knowledge of, of Trisomy 13 and what it's all about <coughs> um, yeah, it's it is a tough it's a tough tough thing daily and I think for us dads, you know, it's it's hard sometimes. We we I think the realisation kicks in at some point. I, if if you have a trisomy thirteen child that lives longer, you kind of come to the realisation eventually that you're normal isn't normal it's far from normal um and that uh, you know you're actually um uh, most i find that most guys are kind of holding it together for their family or for their partners and being the one that's um you know there sort of keeping everything together and trying to shoulder everything um but I think there comes a time when you realise that no, actually you need to talk about this stuff and you need to sort of um, think about yourself as well. Not not in a you know selfish, horrible way. I mean, in a <laughs> saving your sanity type way because uh, <clears throat> it's it's just the guy mentality to kind of just be the the strong one in the family and you know. Um, just get out there and talk go and talk to other parents and try and I don't know just converse it doesn't have to be sad or doom and gloom it's just it's just 
good to talk and it's good to get it out and you know I'm I'm three years down the line now with Darcy and it's it's been a tough ride but I often look at other parents and think wow your ride is tougher um but you know there's there's times when she's had because she has these breath hold spells um which she only ever has if she has a UTI it's like an early warning system for her UTIs <clears throat> um so yeah I'd say that to other parents out there by the way if if you have a child and they're longer living and they start having breath hold spells or something get their urine checked always get their urine checked um, straight away because like with Darcy and another parent I've actually said this to before <clears throat> it always seems to turn out as a UTI but she she has these breath hold spells and when she was younger and you know she'd have them several times a day sometimes and um, it, it, I could only relate it to being like watching someone sort of, you know, die on repeat. That's what it felt like. She'd go grey, limp, stop breathing. And <clears throat> you kind of become a bit hardened to this sort of stuff. And um, I think that's where, that's where dads will need to be thought about, you know, and Sometimes dads just need people to say, you know, are you okay? Or how are you? How are you feeling? I think that's what I find lacks the most is just being asked if, if you're all right. Um, because we're, we're not great at times at coming forwards and saying there's a problem or we don't feel so great. You know, we might go and uh, sit quietly somewhere or punch a punch bag or go and play a computer game or something like that, you know, but um, I think a lot of times it, just asking how they are is is a really big help because um, yeah those guys aren't great at this sort of stuff sometimes <laughs> um, I think that's all I can really say about a guy a, you know a father's experience is it's just I think we we do get forgotten about quite a lot um, I've had a lot of experience with medical professionals um, and I find generally they're really good. Um, my experience early on with Trisomy 13 and the paediatrician and that there when she was born wasn't great because they'd written her off <clears throat> um, and weren't really interested in trying too hard I don't think but all the teams she's been under since they've been brilliant and they have been helpful and Adam Brooks especially you know if I don't know if anyone have be put under any professionals there but they've got they have great teams and they have you know um, in these teams often there's like a psychologist or someone and Adam Brooks has a psychologist in the team that deals with Darcy and she's brilliant. She's always asking how we are, how everything is. Um, I do find sometimes, you know, these, again, it's often a little bit more aimed at mum. Um, which, yeah, that, you know, I know there's medical professionals here today doing other talks and stuff and I just hope that by talking about these sort of things maybe you know maybe if we if I can change one one thing and you know they go away and talk to one of their teams or one of their partners or something and say you know you know what just just be a bit mindful of the dads you know I feel like maybe I've helped someone out there and maybe we've um, you know made it a bit easier for someone else um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave this here. That's just my, my view on things and how, as a dad, I've experienced stuff. Um, you know, I do share, I share a lot of information that I can and I share Darcy's story, um, mainly in the YouTube videos, which um, I post on a channel called Darcy's Diary. Um, so if anyone wants any information, um, extra information, 
just you know feel free to go and check them out and look and soft as well is another hub of information and there's facebook groups out there but dads don't be afraid to kind of go and say hi and you know just get in there there's a lot of women talking and stuff but you know um they're, they're all right <laughs> they're okay and they understand us and we're all going through the same thing um and we all need each other to talk to and share information because the tries me 13 still lacking a lot of studies and you know stuff and we all help each other and um anything you can do yourself to help share information do it help someone else out there and uh thank you i hope you all have a brilliant day um and enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you for listening to me waffle on for a while um but yeah thank you